Uh, no, so I don't do studies, but I do use reference, and I am a big, huge, mega supporter of using reference. For this one, I used a reference photo of a taxidermy bear, and mm -hmm. I can tell you that my painting looks almost nothing like the reference, because that's not what reference is for. So now that you brought that up, I just want to hear from another fellow artist. What is your definition difference between referencing mm -hmm. and copying? Yeah, totally. Big difference. Um, I think, you know, I think that there's implications with both. Like, for example, with copying, I think copying, I think tracing. So, you know, if what you're doing is, and I see a lot of artists do this and I don't uh, like it, but um, if you are going to take a photo that someone else took even, like it's one thing if you're just straight up one-to-one -one copying another person's artwork, that's pretty obviously copying and crappy, you know, mm -hmm. like this is not, I don't know. I mean, unless you're not going to ever show it to anyone and this is a study and you're, you know, doing this and then moving away from it. But that is rarely the case when people one-to-one -one copy other people's art. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, tracing things I think is a problem. So like, let's say there is a photo of Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. You know that that was taken by a professional photographer. Mm -hmm. All of the lighting, all of the values, everything about that photo is an artistic decision that was not made by the person that copies that photo. So mm -hmm. if you do a charcoal drawing of a famous photo of Bill Murray, you really don't get creative, mm -hmm. uh, you know, creative props for, for reproducing the work uh, that somebody else did. So direct one-to-one, -one, especially when you are doing it because you can't draw, <laughs> like mm -hmm. you, you trace out the plot points and then you just shade it in, you know, I mean, that I generally don't think is very good practice just in terms of becoming better at your craft. I think that's kind of a party trick. Mm -hmm. Um, but using reference, I think, is important. And the big difference there is knowing what your reference is for and knowing how to use it without, uh, without overly relying on it. <clears throat> one, one example of that, so like we use bird face here for an example. Yep. Uh, the, there are things about especially if you're doing something organic. So you're doing an animal, you know, there's things that you think that you know about what something looks like and you are wrong. You are, you're just wrong. Like you can picture in your head an elephant. You are wrong about what it looks like. You just are like mm -hmm. you, you just, you don't know. Even if you know, absolutely. I myself have painted hawks and falcons. I've probably painted hundreds of them by now. I still use reference every time because my brain is, is lying to me. My brain <laughs> is wrong. And it, that's just the way that this goes. So the difference that the, that the angle of the pitch of the forehead, the way that, that, you know, that feathers curl around the outside of, of the, you know, where the, the eyes start to meet the side of the head, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. all of these things, are the difference between a successful piece and an unsuccessful piece. You can tell when those things are in the right place and you can tell when they're not. So what reference is for is giving you the, the bone structure, at least reminding your brain of the information that you think that you already know. So I look at a photo of a bear, not because I can't picture a bear, but because I know that I probably would get wrong the way that at, in a three quarter angle, the way the bridge of the nose cuts across the eye. I'm like, okay, I know that it actually cuts across about 20% of the bottom half of the eye. I'm going to use that knowledge to paint. Not, I am going to look exactly at where every mark is and one to one copy it and tra transfer the photo and exactly put it. Mm -hmm. But having something to look at to understand your subject matter without even constantly one-to-one -one looking at it is is weirdly critical and counterintuitive. So like if you're going to draw a person or a pose or anything, even if you even if you know the things that you gather from having reference in your vicinity, you know, and reminding your subconscious, kind of updating, you know, updating the information in your head as you go, um, is is really beneficial just across the board for people that are doing anything based in reality. You know, I mean, if, if you're doing something totally funky and Goofy. totally off the wall, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter, but even if you're going to make a, a little Sasquatch monster, mm -hmm. why not look at a photo of 
gorilla sure. thing. Yeah, you know, and what, what you see is like, oh, well, that's interesting, the way that the shoulder connects, you know, to the shoulder blade across this side. Oh, that's interesting. So it kind of falls this way. You know, you're not, you're not one-to-one copying the photo, but you're learning from the photo as you make a creative piece. This is the most educated and profound <laughs> way to ex- uh, describe the two differences. I mean, this is like... Is that the answer you wanted? I don't no, know. this is the greatest <laughs> answer. It's not what I wanted. It's what we all deserved. Wow. <laughs>